Children all love Thomas the Tank Engine and his friends. Just look at the trouble they can get into. There are 45 collectible characters. New ones include Rusty, Reneus, Duncan, Sir Handel and Peter Sam. Keep your favourites in the Thomas carry case. Children will love them all. And so will Thomas. As to be expected with a franchise aimed at children, Thomas the Tank Engine has had many different toy ranges throughout its nearly 40 year history. These include an entirely wooden collection, motorised characters, Pez dispensers, and bins. There is of course the entire model railway scene too, but I better not lump those in with the toys, otherwise someone might throw a shoe at me. One of the most beloved and well known ranges of Thomas toys came from the company called Ertl. I know the wooden railway has a sizeable fan base too, but honestly I never had those as a kid, so I want to make a video about something that I can actually relate to. Ertl is an American manufacturing company that specialises in toys, most famously die cast metal vehicles. They've made trains, cars, planes, farming equipment and more. The specific toys I want to talk about today are their trains. The Thomas ones to be precise. They were the first company to produce Thomas toys for the television show, but not the actual first toys of the characters, since there had been cardboard kits and a Meccano Percy released years earlier. Just look at that thing, it looks wonderful. Throughout its 20 plus year run, toys of pretty much every known character in the franchise were made. Of course you got your obvious picks like Thomas, Scarlowy, Toby, Diesel and all that lot, but Toys of Railway series exclusive characters that never got adapted were also produced like Caldy, Bear, Jock and Sixteen. That is pretty awesome because as a child I had no idea who these characters were and it made me want to learn a lot more about them. It's a great way of expanding the cast. Beginning in 1984, to coincide with the release of the first series of the show in the United Kingdom, a die cast model of Thomas was released and it came in plastic and card packaging, in a colour that matched them. He came with a decal sheet with different expressions, so that you could swap them out with whatever you wanted. I wasn't born when these were released, but I imagine that these were really fun to make your own stories with. Isn't imagination great? Shortly after that, toys of Henry and James were also made. These early toys had white running boards for some reason, which wasn't at all accurate to the on-screen models, but a strict adherence to screen accuracy wasn't something this toy line was too concerned with, which we'll see in a bit. I actually found one of these original Thomas models in a charity shop not too long ago. He's, uh, special. If anyone out there has any repro labels for this guy, please get in touch because I can feel that blank face staring into my soul. Later, toys of Percy, Toby, Annie and Clarabelle were released, along with updated models of Thomas, Henry and James with the fixed running boards and buffer beams. Three years later, Edwin and Gordon were released, finally completing the original cast. Well, the engines anyway. I like to refer to this as the sticker era. In 1989, the toys were actually released inside the United Kingdom, along with the start of the TV show Shining Time Station. The packaging was different, opting to use a more simplified version without the illustration, but this would later change to a serene, nondescript countryside. It's just… relaxing to look at. Back in the UK, the packaging art would also change. It still featured an illustration of the character, but this time by the artist Owain Bell who was actually quite prolific in the world of Thomas art. Maybe not as well known as the Railway Series illustrators, but if you were around at this time, you would have likely seen his work on things like posters, jigsaw puzzles, and some of the storybooks. The US would eventually get these ones too. In 1990, the way of making the toy spaces changed. The stickers were unfortunately prone to peeling off, and, well, you can imagine, they were easy to lose. The solution to this was to instead add moulded plastic faces. Now, you wouldn't be able to change Thomas's face anymore, but at least it was actually harder to lose now. From this point on, the main Ertle Thomas toys would all have this plastic face. If you were curious about what these plastic ones looked like without their face plates on, then... Here you go. Yep. Nightmarish. Just to be clear, I didn't remove it myself. Poor duck arrived like this in a job lot. At the dawn of the millennium, the packaging was once again changed. Gone with the nice illustrations, replaced by a more standardised and consistent blue and yellow background. Not as nice as looking if you ask me, but I guess they had their reasons. They did bring back portraits for the final packaging design in 2002, which I appreciate, but it just wasn't the same. For the next decade or so, Ertl continued to release Thomas toys annually, racking up a headcount of over 100. Pretty much everyone was covered, including veterans like Duck, all the way up to newer ones like Murdoch or Spencer. It wasn't just limited to the engines either, Ertl also made toys of various other vehicular characters such as Terence, Trevor and Harold, human characters like the Fat Controller, 
and tracks and other such scenery. In addition, there were variants of the toys different to the mainline ones, such as miniature toys that were later adapted into keyrings, ones with metallic finishes, and even motorised engines. In 2003, Ertl acquired Learning Curve International, a toy company who had already been producing the take-along range of Thomas Toys since 2002. In order to avoid conflict with these two ranges, the die-cast Ertl Thomas Toys came to an end after 20 years of production. Whether or not you see this as a good thing is up to you. Since then, there's been a few different lines such as Capsu, Playrail and more, which no doubt have their own dedicated fan base, probably making videos about those as well. One of the most noticeable quirks about Ertl Thomas Toys was its complete and total disregard of scale. It's not a major problem I have, and it's a limitation of the process of making the toys I'd imagine, but it still tickles me. There is absolutely no consistency with the size whatsoever. This may seem like a problem, but honestly I was never bothered by it as a kid, and since I was part of the target audience and didn't care, then I consider it a non-issue. But that's just me. Maybe this really bothers you, and other people. Maybe. I mean, just look at this. Gordon is meant to be an A1 Pacific, which is, you know, pretty big. Toby is a tram, who is still taller than a human, but, you know, not that big. Put him next to Gordon and compare this. And let's also put Peter Sam there as well, just for good measure. Look at that skill. It makes no sense, and I love it. These days, Ertl toys are something of a collectible amongst Thomas fans. I'm sure many of us had our own childhood collections that we may or may not have held on to since then, or even started completely new ones with adult money. Unfortunately, I did not have access to most of my original toys, so I had to start fresh. I do still have my original Henry and Harold though, so that's something. When looking at my Henry recently, I actually found this felt driver inside it. I honestly have no idea what this is from, so if anyone could tell me what this is from, that would be great. If you were curious, here's my collection so far. First off, we have Thomas. I have three of him, one of whom is the original 1984 one with the white running boards. And I also have this um, unopened Thomas with a plastic face that I got off eBay for about 20 or so pound a few years ago. Quite happy with him. I have these three Jameses. Yeah, some of the ones I have are actually multiples and I was thinking if I need to get rid of any of these and make some space, I may actually give some of my duplicates away in future giveaways. So yeah, look out for that. These three Henrys, and if you can tell, the one in the middle is actually a different shade of green to the other two. So yeah, that was a whole thing. Yep, Gordon the big guy, there he is in all of his glory. Edward, whose face kind of gives me nightmares. Just look at that. Uh, three diesels, three times the devious, three times the fun. The narrow gauge crew, minus Smudger, Reneus, Duncan, and Bertram, I believe. We actually have two Scalloways there. Bill, unfortunately, without Ben. Donald, unfortunately, without Douglas. Cheeky little Percy, three ducks, including the faceless monstrosity himself. An original sticker Toby and two Henriettas. These lovely ladies, an express coach, a fuel tanker, Butch, who is the only car I have, Derek, who I really wish we saw again in the series, Stepney, thankfully with no Ari and Bert to terrorise him, Bear, who I consider finding some kind of miracle, Daisy looking as dashing as ever, and finally, two Harolds, both missing their propellers. I don't know if they got chewed off or what. If you're looking to buy Ertl Thomas trains online, most of them are reasonably priced, and you can often get them on online marketplaces, vintage stores, or selling apps like Vinted. But, due to the nature of collecting vintage toys, there are a select number of them that are considerably rarer and costly to purchase, such as Jock or the Brown Troublesome Trucks. I'm not sure how it is in other countries, but over here in Wales, it's always worth checking out your local charity shops and car boot sales, because they've usually got old Thomas stuff. Sometimes it's just books, but occasionally you'll find something really worthwhile. For instance, I found Rolling Stock, Butch, this original Thomas, and even Bear, who goes for about £50 on eBay, each for less than a pound. Not trying to brag, but just saying it's worth checking out if you want some older Thomas stuff. Who knows, maybe you'll even find an Ertl Jock at your nearest one. So, do you have any memories of the Ertl toys? Did you used to play with them? For instance, I used to like playing with mine on my track and making up my own Thomas stories. For some reason, it was always narrow gauge focused. I also used to like burying them in the sand pit in my garden, for some reason. Do you look back on the little toys fondly, or do you consider them inferior to other lines? Let me know down in the comments because I love reading them. To be honest, these were the only Thomas toys I really had as a child, 
so I don't really have any inclination to make videos on more, but maybe I could one day if there's any need for it. Be sure to check out my other videos on Thomas as well if you haven't already, because I've done quite a few now. Also be sure to like and subscribe and let me know what you think. Thank you for watching and have a great day.